and they fear the competition. Unfortunately, most parents can't fight the discrimination alone. And so sadly, many parents give in and they deliver up their children to the system. I say these things not to disparage the many good Christian teachers that we have. We need them, but we need them to be there, to speak up for us when our children face inappropriate indoctrination. On one occasion, a teacher came to me and she said, you know, I really think it's gone too far. How could we ever bring it back? She said, I know what you're saying, but how could we ever bring it back? I said, you know, for a lot of kids, you're right, you can't bring it back. But remember, there's little ones coming along. We can do better for them, and we have to do better for them. In 2005, I was asked to join a group of concerned folks from various fields. We had doctors and uh, we had psychologists and uh, uh, we were even blessed to have uh, Bishop McDonald from, um, from St. John to come up. And we addressed both the Liberal Caucus and the Conservative Caucus with regards to uh, uh, suggested changes to this new sex program I talked about for grades 6, 7, and 8. I was probably the, the least qualified to, uh, to be heard. But in any case, uh, it so happens that uh, opposition leader at the time, Sean Graham, at the end of the meeting, he asked, he said, how can I tell when material is appropriate or inappropriate? And uh, I didn't say much during the meeting, um, but I raised my hand slowly for this one, and I suggested that he use the test of expectations. If the child comes away from the lesson, thinking that adults really do expect him to be sexually active. He probably will be. But if he comes away expecting and believing that the values of marriage and family are something that will give him a better, healthier, happier, more secure life, he will be most likely to choose that path. Unfortunately, our suggestions were rejected. It seems as though our secular society and our public school system desperately wants and expect our children to liberate themselves, to reject the outdated restrictions of religion, and to embrace the permissive lifestyle. Oh, we can get a few little concessions along the way. Oh, we'll do this for you, we'll do that for you. But believe me, they intend to wait us out and slowly but surely proceed to the next level with the next class of innocent young children. What are the consequences if we just decide, well, well let it go? Nobody seems to care. Why fight this? What are the consequences for children? One Mary parent said it best, and she said this speaking to our local MLA about the assembly program. My child has been violated. In public school, your innocent children, your precious grandchildren, will be subject to those who clearly show little regard for the values you cherish, for the values you try to pass on to your child. Someday, when it's too late, you might find that your child, all grown up, has a different view of life. For the sake of these, our dear children, we must do better. What are the consequences for marriage? In today's world, marriage seems to be so inconvenient. Why would the university in all these things? People think, is it really necessary? We'll put it off. We'll put it off. What a terrible and serious disservice it is if we do not respect the institution of Christian marriage. And if we do not support and encourage marriage for our grown children, if we don't value marriage, someday perhaps for your grandchildren, marriage will mean very little. It's already begun. What are the consequences for the right to life? Those who permit and promote a permissive social environment in our schools believe that children conceive unexpectedly are deemed unwanted and should be systematically disposed of as just so much garbage. 
At the assembly, they said to the children, quote, abortion is available in Frederick, that is, moment. In the operating room, it takes about five minutes. Then you go home. You're fine. Unquote. How will the next generation find it in their hearts to take a stand to protect innocent human life? What are the consequences for the church? Sadly, our own Christian community has failed to respond. And sadly, some parents have already lost their own dear children to a secular, permissive culture. Have you noticed it happening in your church? You probably don't have to look very far. A few of our churches have recognized that if they are going to pass their faith and their values along to their children, they must step up and provide a truly Christian education. Thank God for them. Cooperation among churches would help slow the moral decline of the public schools. But sadly, most churches simply don't have the will to do what it would take. It seems that we would rather dwell on petty differences. We could address these concerns successfully if we did it together. It's not a matter of changing somebody's doctrine. It's a matter of addressing a common concern. For months now, our president, our membership president, Gina Cote, has been meeting with a group of church folks to pray about these concerns twice a week. She told me, we can pray, but the men of the church really have to get involved to take a stand on these issues. I thought about what she said. I said, my goodness, she's right. She's absolutely right. Where are the men? The men are the fathers, and they have a responsibility to their families to be the father protector. Gina was right. The men of the church have a serious responsibility, which too often has been left wanting. But thankfully, some things are being done. We do have some Christian schools, and we have many Christian homeschools. We also have many dedicated, like-minded souls who have taken up the struggle for life and family, and I'm going to mention a few. Mary Thurow has served the children of New Brunswick faithfully for many, many years. She has our thanks and our gratitude. She is soon going to be passing the torch of hope to Marsha Boyd Mitchell, who is with us this morning. Marsha is to become the new director of the Christian Action Federation. Marsha is also the principal of the Sussex Christian School. May God bless her and may God bless her work. We are also very thankful to have Dr. Carolyn Barrett, our longtime supporter and friend, as the principal of Our Lady of Grace Catholic School in Fredericton. We are inspired by her selflessness and her sacrifice. I would also like to thank God for my own dear children who have blessed our family with seven grandchildren. All of them are being homeschooled in a decidedly Christian, pro-life environment. I know there are many more here 
challenges. Some had difficulties. She loved every one of them. She lived and she taught the love of Christ. Last June, Shannon became very ill. She passed away after a difficult struggle to finish the school term. This dear lady gave her all for the sake of the children she loved. One of her teachers, Mrs. Cindy Diaz, is trying to continue the work. Pray for her and pray that that work will prosper.